Okay. Uh, it's possible to access data from GEE, Google Earth Engine. Um, who can tackle the Google Earth Engine question? Got a little bit of information from Anna on it once. Um, Anna, yeah, you can, can share that? I can try. Um, so there, so Google Earth Engine has a data catalog that hosts a lot of different satellite data sets. Currently, it only hosts um, some MODIS um, level three data, I believe. There is no PACE data in the Google Earth Engine data catalog. However, it might be possible to ingest your own PACE data and do analysis on the Google Earth Engine um, platform. Um, but there's also um, a way to request data sets. So if enough people request PACE, maybe Google will um, pull it from the OBDAC like they did with MODIS and, and have it in their data catalog. But as of now, um, it's currently not in their catalog, but you might be able to. I haven't done it myself or no one know of anyone, but you might be able to ingest it yourself. Okay, excellent. Yep. Yeah. You can generate KML, KMZ files through C, CDAS. So you can generate your own uh, files that you can view through Google Earth. So it's not quite as uh, appealing as having it directly in the Google Earth engine, but um, there are means to be able to visualize uh, paste data uh, within uh, Google Earth. Excellent. All right, thank you for that. So I actually did find um, there are questions and answers. There are questions being answered. It looks like that you guys are tackling them all. Um, one set, one person is asked, are there any suggestions for an app working with the net CDF imagery? I'm not sure what that one, um, anybody have an interpretation of what that one might mean? Um, an application like CDAS maybe? <laughs> perhaps. So CDAS would do that, right? CDAS or our Jupyter notebooks that we mentioned, those both open the net CDF and visualize it. You can see the imagery through those. Those are two options that we talked about today. Um, there's also Morgane, a nice lightweight app called panoply, um, that folks might be interested. It's lighter weight than, um, CDAS, uh, so it can give you a, a way of looking at those files, but do, do note that they're not, these are, these are net CDF files, um, especially the level one and level two that are, that have a lot of structure to them. So it's not quite like opening up an image. Um, they're a little more complicated than uh, than opening up an image, but Panoply can be great. And I think Andy just posted a link to it in the chat. Great, thank you. Um, I see a comment here. All right, I'm switching to the chat to look for some more questions. I've checked the questions and answers. Um, let's see. Some can't find the Q and A button. Um, it says, "Can we see paste data as a time series using the NASA Giovanni tool in the future?" Who'd like to tackle that one? Does anybody know about NASA Giovanni here? All right. <laughs> I know about Giovanni and. Um, my recollection is that the Giovanni tool is really coming out of the the Jez disk, um, and I don't think we've, you know, maybe somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think we've had Giovanni um, working on um, the other products that we have in the OB DAC. Um, I will say, keep your eyes open. There, there, with the transition to Earth Data Cloud, there's a new feature um, known as Harmony. This is being um, developed centrally um, by the uh, by the ESDIS um, by the um, the people that run Earth Data Cloud, and once um, data becomes sort of uh, more fully available um, and Harmony gets a little more further along, then Harmony may be the tool that allows you to do the sort of time series plotting on a lot of data sets that haven't even historically been included in 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 what Giovanni has access to. Um, so we'll hopefully you know if uh, if Pace data gets um, looped in to the Harmony API, um, that will provide an easy way for you to do things like gem generating time series, and, and we'll be looking at that. Excellent, thank you for that, Ian. 
Um, let's see, we have another question here. Does CDOS have the ability to search and download data or is it designed for already downloaded data files? Danny, would you like to take that one? Uh, yeah, it, it doesn't have a, a data search feature that I'm aware of. I think there's something in there, open DAP. I'm not that familiar with that. Uh, CDAS is a tool that's um, um, uh, that it's similar to the, the SNAP tool. So SNAP does have their um, ESA's SNAP components. I think they have an open DAP in there. Um, so that, but um, that is something that we're considering for the future though. Okay. Yeah, is there consideration for any kind of CDAS and cloud support? Because I wonder if that's kind of along the lines this question also might have been thinking for when, you know, there's too much data to, to download perhaps. Yeah, there, there is, and, and we're, we're looking into it now. Can't really answer exactly okay. what to do yet in the cloud, but certainly um, um, processing would be one of the things we're um, looking for to be able to process in the cloud and then ultimately download your processed files. Um, and yeah, so, so we're, we're looking into it, the cloud options. I do see uh, somebody asked about Spectrum View. And yeah, feel free to. And um, I answer that. That that well clearly you showed a spectrum view plot of PACE OCI data. So the question was whether it supports um, OCI, and it does. And it, it supports any uh, file with has uh, spectral data. Spectral meaning that it has wavelength dependent bands. So as long as the the file itself has wavelength dependent bands and the reader that uh, ingests it into CDAS can read those bands and understand the wavelengths, then you can create spectrum view plots of um, any mission, especially PACE, like RRS, um, remote sensing reflectance, the, um, the surface reflectance, the, um, many of the IOP bands are wavelength dependent. So there's uh, many bands that um, PACE has that uh, you can uh, view the spectral signature of in CDAS. Um, someone is also asking if L2Gen is working uh, with data while you're here, Danny. <laughs> yeah, there's. Was there an issue? Was there any issues with L2Gen and CDAS? Someone it seems is wondering if it works on the data. But, well, yeah, it does. Um, it might depend on what tag you're on, because this is provisional, and we're all developing as we go. So. It's not going to work on the OCSSWV 2023 point, um, whatever tag, it, it'll work on the V 2024.0 tag, which hasn't been released for OCSSW code. So at the moment, to get PACE working, you're, you're going to need to use the test tags. So in CDAS, you'd have to go to preferences um, to, to find it. Um, it's hard to explain where it is, but in, in preferences, there's a little CDAS icon, and then you could um, be able to view what the latest tag is. But um, I think the latest tag is T2024.19. Um, so whatever the latest tag is, if you download that or the tag that I mentioned, um, then that would work for level two processing, but this is an ongoing thing as they're developing. Okay, or they this can also wait and it will work. Once this the tag is changed to the yeah, other. once the V tag we call it, it yeah. V tag, it's the OCS yeah. W, but that's the official tag. But it, but it does work. Yeah, so, so that's the other option is to wait right that's until the that release comes out. Okay, are there any other? I'm scanning through any other CDAS questions. I'm seeing some good comments. Um, there's a comment about um, spectral view in CDAS for OCI spectra, if that's available. Yeah, yeah I answered that it is. Yeah. 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 And, and also, some of these are, are complicated, and we will be making um, uh, tutorials, video tutorials on CDAS tools, focusing first on the um, PACE applicable tools and spectrum view, true color. Those are like, going to be some of the early ones we make. So in the coming months, you'll, you should be seeing us make those videos, tutorial videos on CDAS. 
Excellent. Um, somebody has asked, um, what is the atmospheric correction procedure in OCI? Is it similar to standard procedure? Who knows about the atmospheric correction approach? I'm wondering if we can, yeah, get Antonio. I think he he started to put an answer here. Yeah, I, I put an answer to to my understanding. It's the multiband atmospheric correction algorithm MBAC. I was about to put it in the DOI in the in the chat for it, but basically it follows on the previous standard ocean biology processing group uh, atmospheric correction algorithm called based. It's called the multi scattering epsilon approach or MSteps, uh, which only used two infrared bands. Um, with the um, and you had to switch between near infrared and shortwave infrared bands. With MBAC uh, developed by Ibrahim et al, um, you can use multiple infrared bands, more than two, um, to um, for the aerosol model selection, um, in 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 deriving the atmosphere correction for the ocean color instrument. I can I'll put the uh, link to the publication in the chat in the chat. And I, I think it might be fair to add, Antonio, that we're using um, um, really a, 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 an, a, a, an advancement on the radiative transfer modeling codes that, that have previously been used. So we have a, a collaborator at UMBC who's developed uh, a new radiative transfer model that is helping us um, develop all of the lookup tables uh, and simulation and modeled outputs that go into that atmospheric correction process with, uh, with really a lot of a lot of detailed um, but important improvements, including things like um, uh, in getting rid of some assumptions that have maybe been a little tight before, like a, like a curved atmosphere. I think we now have a curved atmosphere in our uh, in our atmospheric correction uh, processing. So there's there's little improvements um, in in that front as well. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not fully documented yet. So hopefully, that'll be forthcoming in a in an ATBD. Um, thank you guys for that answer. And, um, so there's 1 here, a question that they say somewhat off topic, but are the 3D model files of the satellite data public available pub publicly? Um, yes, go to our pace gallery on our website. We can, we can get the link for you. We have a gallery of all the fancy, um, all the beautiful NASA animations of pace, including paces orbit, what the spacecraft looks like, et cetera. Um. And we'll put that in the chat. If I can add something, I'm not sure if the person yeah. uh, means the 3D model files to 3D print a version of the of the satellites because I've been asked that often. So oh. I think maybe maybe it's that and that I don't think uh, we have. Um, we do have a, a little um, a 3D model that you can uh, play with. Uh, that's interactive. Uh, um, I, I can put the link in, in the chat after. Uh, but uh, it, it's not uh, the the kind of 3D model that would print well. Um, so, yeah, it's just <laughs> I'm not sure what the application for this one. Yeah, great. No, good point. That that actually sounds more like maybe what they were asking for. Um. I think we've gotten all the questions. Have I missed any panelists? Have you guys been scanning too? I've been scanning through. It looks like they've all been gotten. Um, I have maybe a last one. Uh, someone asked uh, about the red tides. Um, I guess, uh, uh, what, what information uh, we can uh, get for the red tides with pace, I suppose. Well, um, the question, yeah, I wasn't entirely sure about um, the question. So I think it just does it, it says red tide question mark. I, so I guess one official answer would be there is not any harmful algal bloom products available yet. And as far as I know, um, cyan would be um, the cyan one, which looks at um, cyanobacteria in inland waters and fresh in freshwater systems. Um, we're looking at applying that to PACE data and making that available that's the soonest one that i'm of i know of that will be looking at harmful algal blooms with paste data um if anybody else has anything to add to that please do but that's what i would i know yeah we will be evaluating um harmful algal bloom algorithms that that currently exist to evaluate them to see if they work well with paste and and whether uh, it is uh, appropriate to implement them in, in the data processing stream or um, so that that is in the future. 
I did see one statement earlier in the chat about colorblind compliancy, colorblind com uh, friendly, uh, and uh, I'm not sure what it was referring to, but I just wanted to let you know that C CDAS has uh, available within it colorblind compliant palettes and also like the level two masks that you can adjust the colors on those. So. There's a lot in CDAS that can be done to um, help create color com colorblind compliant uh, palettes. And I'm sure uh, Panoply and some of these other um, ones as well um, can um, have colorblind compliant um, palettes. And I would encourage people to actually consider using those. I would like to add to that uh, that uh, also, I think the data, uh, uh, data. Um, Product table is uh, the one that is not uh, colorblind friendly, which is a good point. Uh, we'll bring it up to uh, our website team. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thanks for that. So um, there is a question here. What algorithm are you going to use for the phytoplankton composition product? Um, Antonio, do you want to speak to that one? Is it in the data table or which one did we use on the press image? So, um, the 1 that is used in the press image that Jeremy showed earlier, um, is the Moana algorithm, um, by Lange et al. Um, but there are, there are several being are several planned. Um, if you look at the data products table and look under phytoplankton community composition row, there's, um, um, there's a couple, um, listed, uh, well, I guess it, it lists the SAT members that are working on these, uh, data products. Um, so that that's largely the extent of information we have to date. Um, but there were, um, products developed by Ali chase at all and by Sasha Kramer and, um, at all. And those are, those are being uh, evaluated and, um, once, uh, approved, uh, can be implemented. But though, those are the 3 primary ones in addition to the cyan that you mentioned Morgane. Excellent. Um, let's see, we have maybe 2 minutes left. Let's see. Is there 1 more question kind of looking around? I don't see a new 1 that's popped up. Um, anybody have 1 last question. All right. Well, it looks like we have gotten them all then that's great. That's perfect timing. Um, I want to thank each and every 1 of you so, so much for your time to come and answer questions today. And I want to thank Jeremy for giving us an update on the mission today. And thanks to all of you for joining us and, um. Keep up to date with us and we will see you at the next webinar. Thank you.